All right, welcome to the first example for double integration method. Um, the double integration method, we need to use a formula, and the formula um, you should be somewhat familiar with. d squared y over dx squared is equal to your moment over ei, okay? This is the equation we need to use for um, double integration method. And the double integration method basically says that along any span which the loads aren't really changing, um, you can plug a moment equation for that span into this equation here. And you can integrate this equation one time to get dy dx. And if you integrate it once, you're going to get your slope. So you can find the slope along any point of the span if you integrated this equation one time. And if you integrated it again, so if you integrated dy dx, you get y, and you'd get your deflection at any point on this span, the span AB. Um, <clears throat> so this moment here is, is your internal moment between or it's your internal moment along one span. In our case, our beam has only one span, A, B. Okay? So we need to find the equation of the internal moment that illustrates the moment at any point along this span. All right? So the first thing we need to do, and I think by example it'll make a lot more sense, um, we need to draw, or we actually got to figure out these reactions A and B, right? So the resultant of this, oops, the resultant of this distributed, uniformly distributed load W is, well, it's W times L, right? So that means the reactions here at A and B, since the loading is symmetrical, the beam is symmetrical, um, everything's acting at the middle, you know that the, you know that the reactions at A and B are WL over 2 right? W, L over 2. So those are the reactions um, for this beam. Now, the double integration method states that we need to find a moment equation to plug into this big equation. And we can integrate it once to get the slope, integrate it twice to get the deflection. So that means we need to find the equation of the internal moment along this span and the best way to do that is to take a cut anywhere along this span because the loading doesn't change along this span so we can take it about um, any point between A and B and we can redraw that piece. So let me redraw this this piece that I cut and I cut it right here right and we have part of this distributed load here really all of this should be straight I'm just being a little lazy and we have this reaction WL over 2, <clears throat> right? So this is W. Um, I cut it along some distance. Um, I'm just going to call this distance, uh, I'll call this distance X, right? And the internal moment, remember if you cut from, if you cut a span and you look at the left side, the internal moment, uh, uh, sign convention is usually like this, right? It creates a smiley face moment. Um, but really actually doesn't matter um, because when we take the sum of the moments about, let's call this point here, point O, and I say, okay, well, I can do this as positive. We'll have your moment here and then minus WL over 2 uh, times the distance from z this point O to the WL over 2 reaction. That's a distance x, right? And then you have this distributed load, which creates a positive moment, right? So you have W times x times the distance from O to the center of this load, which is x over 2 is equal to zero, right? So if I simplify this a bit, I'll get moment 
minus WLX over 2 plus WX squared over 2 is equal to 0. And if I solve for M, I'm going to get WLX over 2 minus WX squared over 2. Right? So this moment, this moment we actually found in terms of an equation with x being a distance. This is the moment we need to plug into here. And once we do, we can integrate this equation once to find the slope of any point along any point of this span. And we can integrate it one more time to find the deflection at any point. So let's let's actually do that. Let's plug in let's plug in this equation into our uh, d squared or our um, equation um, that we wrote up here. So let's plug this m into this box, right? So I'm going to get d squared y dx squared is equal to m, which was wlx over two minus wx squared over 2 um, and all of that is divided by ei but since it's divided by ei I can actually just move the ei to the other side of the equation so I don't have to worry about it um, in this integration now we can integrate this both, side of the, both sides of these equations one time and that's going to give us our theta or our slope or our rotation so if I integrated this, I'd get dy dx ei. And then remember, you have a constant, but I'm going to leave that out for now because I'm just going to throw the, all the constants onto the right side of the equation. And, and this, I you know, we can integrate this piece and this piece separately. So the integral of the first term will look something like this, right? WL over 2 is a constant. I can pull that out, minus w over 2 integral of x squared dx, right? w over 2 is also a constant. I can pull that out. So if I integrated this first term, I'll get wl over 2 times x squared over 2 minus w over 2, um, oops, not integral, uh, just x cubed over 3 and if I simplify this a little bit more, I'll get WLX squared over 4 minus WX cubed over 6, right? Plus a constant I'll call constant 1, all right? So EI dy dx, we integrated this equation once and we found the rotation. We can integrate this one more time uh, to find the deflection. And we'll actually continue doing this example um, in the next video. Alright, see you then.